Hey, it's Dave from CG Shortcuts. Today, we're going to do this. We're making a magical Harry Potter spawning effect in Cinema 4D and X Particles. So Lucas Charetta asked if we could have a go at creating the spawning effect in the Bellatrix vault scene of Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2. I have to admit, I hadn't seen the film, but here's a short clip so you can see the scene we're talking about. Everything you touch will multiply. So I managed to create something pretty similar using Cinema 4D and X Particles, which looks just like this. I know absolutely nothing about Harry Potter, so I've actually used the ring from Lord of the Rings instead, mainly because it was quick and easy to model, but we've got it bouncing around on the floor and every time it lands, it spawns more rings. Also, as time goes by, I've got it spawning more and more rings and all the objects are interacting with each other. As I said, I used X Particles to do this, but if you don't have X Particles, you can do this easy enough in Cinema 4D version 20, where there's some great new tools that'll let you do something pretty similar. All right, before we get started, I just wanted to mention a website I've been using a lot lately called Skillshare, who are sponsoring this video. Basically, Skillshare gives you unlimited access to more than 25,000 full courses on a huge range of subjects. The classes are project-based and teachers take you through all the steps in creating each project and when you're done, you can share your work with teachers and the student community for feedback and support. We've actually got two CG Shortcuts courses on there now, with our latest course launched just last month, covering a bunch of stuff beyond what we normally go into on YouTube. So if you want to test out Skillshare, there's a link below for a free two-month trial that will give you access to the entire catalog of courses, including the courses from CG Shortcuts. So you can see if it's right for you. Now let's get back to the tutorial. So here we are in Cinema 4D and we've got things set up the usual way. Under the render settings, we're working HD 1920 by 1080 and we've got 24 frames per second. Our project is matching that frame rate down here. And we've also got 600 frames to play with. So our first step would be to create our magical ring. And you can use whatever enchanted object you want, but a ring will be nice and easy for this example. We'll come up here and we'll grab an object that looks a bit like a ring, our old friend, the Taurus. And we wanna keep this guy pretty simple and low res. Let's come up to display and turn the lines on. We've probably got more geometry in here than we need. So over here under the object tab, we'll bring those segments down to something like 20. And we don't want this ring so huge. So we'll bring the radius down to 10 and this one down to 40 centimeters. Then we'll just frame him up and we've probably got a few too many segments around this way as well. So we'll bring those pipe segments down to eight. And now we need something for our ring to collide with. So we'll bring in a floor. We'll use a plane. And we want this plane to be a bit bigger than this. So we'll bring up that width and height. Only this time, we actually need a lot of segments in here. So for now, we'll bring those up to 30. And you'll see why very shortly. So our ring is going through the floor there. So let's grab that and bring it up a bit. We basically just want it to fall straight down and collide with the ground here. So with our torus selected, we'll come up to tags, simulation tags, and we'll grab a rigid body. And if we come down here and hit play, it falls down and passes through our floor again. So we'll rewind that. Now we'll grab our plane and we'll go back to tags, simulation tags, and this guy is going to be a collider body. So now, as you'd expect, if we hit play, our ring collides with the floor nicely. So how do we get it to spawn another ring every time it hits the ground? Here's where the magic comes in. We'll come up here to our X particles menu and then down to other objects. We have a magical little object called the XP vertex map. And if we bring that in, we've got a few options down here. It's basically going to generate a vertex map that'll drive our particle spawning. So we need to tell it which object to create our vertex map on. In our case, it's the plane, but we'll need to make this object editable so it has vertexes for this effect to work. So we'll right click and come down here to make editable. And now we can grab our XP vertex map again and we'll grab our plane and drag it into the object slot here. And once you've done that, you'll notice this little vertex tag appear up here. And if we click on that, everything goes red and this is an indication of which vertexes are being affected. 
Right now, with everything being red, nothing is being affected. So we want to find a way to make this turn yellow wherever our ring touches this plane. So let's go back up to our vertex map and have a look at our options. So down here, under the object tab still, we've got a section for source. And if we click this, you can see a few different options here, but the one we want is polygons. And now it's asking us for an object. So basically, we're going to tell it to use the polygons of a particular object, in our case, the ring, to drive this vertex map. So if we grab our torus and drag that into here, you'll see our vertex map's gone yellow where it's making contact with our ring. And the more subdivisions you have in your plane, and therefore the more vertexes, will dictate the resolution of your yellow bit here. And that's why we cranked that up just a little bit before. So let's play this back and see it in action. You can see that yellow patch is growing and continues to grow when our ring has stopped. Now we don't want that. We only want it to be yellow when it makes contact. So let's go and check out our options again. We've got this mode here that's currently set to set weight. Let's try set weight then fade. And that's working the way we want it to. Now it's just isolated around our ring here and it should only go yellow when it touches the floor. And if it bounces up, it should just fade away. So now all we need to do is emit particles from these yellow patches. So let's rewind and we'll come back to our X particles menu. And this time we'll grab an XP system. Don't worry if you've lost your red down here. It's just because we don't have the vertex map selected anymore. Let's see what our XP system looks like. You can see we've just got some particles being emitted out that way. But we want these particles to be emitted by our vertex map. So we'll stop that and we'll grab our emitter. And under the object tab here, we'll change the emitter shape to object. Then here for our object, we actually want our plane. So we'll grab that and drag it into here. And then for the selection, we want the vertex map that's on the plane. So this guy here, we'll drag that into there. And now if we play that back, it hits the ground and shoots up loads of particles. Probably way too many of these guys. And you can see they're currently shooting out of the middle of each of these polygons here. And that's because we've got emit from polygon center selected. So let's change that to polygon area and play that back. And that's looking a bit more organic. It's emitting randomly within the yellow space of our vertex map. So the next thing we want to do is make a lot less of these particles. So we'll go over to the emission tab and down here at the birth rate, all we need to do is bring this number down. Let's bring it all the way down to two. And now when we play back, it hits and just a couple of particles shoot up in the air. So now we want to replace each one of these particles with another ring. So this time we'll go over to generators and it'll ask us to choose a generator. We'll grab an XP generator and we need to tell it which emitter to use. So we've only got one emitter, so we'll drag that in here. And now we need an object to be generated. Of course, we want our torus. So let's grab that guy. And we just need to make this a child of our generator for this to work. So just hold control and drag that under here to duplicate it and make it a child. And while we're here, we still want these to be dynamic. So we can actually grab our tag and put that up here on the generator itself. So let's see what happens now. It hits and it goes crazy and there's lots of little dots flying around. But if we pause that, and zoom into one of those dots. You can see we've got our rings, but they're really tiny. And that's because if we go to our generator and down to our scale rotation and offset controls, you'll see that it's using the particle radius for the scale. But if we change that to source object scale, it should keep our torus the size that it should be. And if we hit play, let's fix that problem but they're still going a bit crazy. So we'll stop that. And we'll go and check out our dynamics tag. Under the collision tab, we'll need to change individual elements to top level. So the dynamics treats them as individual shapes and not one big shape. And that pretty much gives us our effect. Every time it hits the ground, it spawns new rings. And because everything's dynamic, those new rings will keep pushing our old ring around and it'll keep spawning until eventually they'll push it off the edge there. 
And if you can remember from the example, I had the amount of rings being emitted growing every time it hit the ground. And the way to set that up is to come back to our emitter and under the emission tab, we can animate the birth rate. So let's set a keyframe there. And if we go ahead to about frame 80 and we crank this up to 10 and set another keyframe, then we'll play that back. You can see every time it hits, it's spawning more and more particles until the birth rate is 10. And that'll push him over the edge even quicker. So I'll quickly show you a way where you can stop that from happening. Basically, we'll just build a wall around our floor to keep these guys in here. Let's grab a cube and we'll just scale this, not that way, out to the sides. So it encompasses our scene here. Then we'll right click on our cube and make it editable. Then we'll go over here and switch on polygon mode. We'll grab the top of our cube and hit delete. And we might as well grab the bottom and delete that as well. Then back to our object mode. We'll drag our wall up and maybe scale it up a bit. Something like that. And then we can just use the same dynamics collision tag on our plane. We'll hold control and drag that up to our cube. So that'll be a collider body as well. And if we hit play, it just stops in midair. And that's because our dynamics are treating the cube as a cube still. So we'll grab that tag and we'll just change the shape from automatic to static mesh, which is a bit more accurate. If we hit play, that's working fine. And as it bounces to the edge, it should hit that wall and start bouncing back towards the center. You might get a few rings escaping out here. So the easiest way to fix that is to just bring that birth rate back down. So it's not creating too many and going crazy like that. We'll just delete the animation track there. And now you should get a nice organic animation that even JK Rowling would be proud of. So our magic ring will just bounce around making more magic rings until the whole box fills up or it lands on top of another one of these rings and it can't quite touch the floor or until you run out of frames. And if we stop that there and click back on our vertex map, you can see what's actually happening here. Every time it hits the ground, it lights up yellow and produces another particle. And that's pretty much it for this effect. Put a camera in there and follow your ring around and I'm sure you'll get some interesting animations. As usual, you can download the project file below to save a bit of time. So now it's time to reveal the winners of this month's Nature Challenge. In third place, winning the $50 Daz 3D voucher is Irfan Kaya. In second place, winning the $75 voucher is Shafiksha Sadiq. In first place, winning the $100 Daz 3D voucher is Mohammed Ahmed. And this month's CG Shortcut staff pick goes to Hiran Shuhan. Big thanks to everybody who got involved. We had some really amazing artwork this month. Our winners have chosen a bunch of different themes and our Facebook group has voted on the next challenge, which will be hashtag 1980s. So hop into your software of choice and start creating 1980s themed artwork. There's a link below with full details on how to enter. Good luck and I'll be back soon with another tutorial. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you want to see in the comment section below. Or you can leave a like or dislike. And don't forget to subscribe and click on that little bell icon for more videos and free stuff. Catch you next time.